All right, so we're underneath the car right now. Uh, this is the back of the car. This area up here will be the front. And looking at what we need to get out of the way, we've got this piece here, as you can see, I've already taken out some of the uh, uh, bolts from the back. There are three back here, or excuse me, two that are back here. And then we've got a total of four up towards the front that need to be loosened and removed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll take a closer look at the oil pan and the oil filter housing. So at this point, I've gone ahead and taken off that bottom, uh, call it skid plate, and checked to confirm everything that we would need. So to take off the skid plate, you're looking at a 10 millimeter socket. And then with uh, actually getting off the oil filter, that plastic housing, it's a 27 millimeter uh, fuel filter or oil filter socket that you're going to need. Uh, additionally, you have the filter itself. This is what Kia provided me. Uh, 26320 3 CKB0, the oil filter itself. And the oil filter should come with I'll just confirm an o-ring that goes on the actual oil filter housing and a crush washer and yep they are in there i don't know how well you can see that but we'll show you that a little bit further when we go and then uh, the best oil that you can buy that meets the specifications of the manufacturer which i'll go back over that in a little bit more detail uh, either that or watch one of my other videos where i talk about uh, oil in general, but I will be spending a little bit of time just right off the bat to let you know uh, I actually want to inspect the fuel filter, that, or excuse me, the oil filter we're going to be pulling out uh, to see whether it really was worth the time and energy to go ahead and do an early oil change. Okay, so I've got the cover off and as you can tell this is going to be the drain port. Our oil filter housing is right over here. Um, kind of a nice little feature about it is it's got this this extra little if you want to call it uh, divot or, or opening so that when I crank this open um, if I don't crank it out too far just enough to get the seal past it uh, it'll start to drain out any of that excess oil that's stuck in there uh, helps reduce the amount of mess uh, the other thing that I like is they actually I don't know how well you can see it but 35 newton meters um, is what's listed on here so uh, that tells you how far to torque it down because this is made out of a hard plastic uh, you can strip it break it crack it so um, you just want to make sure that you never over tighten it and that's generally a good rule of thumb with any type of uh, oil filter um, usually they just need to pretty much be uh, a good hand tight you don't need to uh, wrench it down real hard with these back bolts or or the actual oil filter housing. One other thing, uh, in the last little piece that I gave you, I did not realize that there was one in here. So after I got all of those uh, bolts disconnected, it was still attached firmly. And so I just located that extra bolt. So uh, you actually have one, two, three, four, five bolts that need to be removed in the front and then two in the back. So let me go ahead and see if I can figure out what size we're looking at here, uh, and I will get back with you. I need a 17 millimeter socket in order to loosen up the drain plug. The drain plug is already loosened at this point. It's not a lot of working room down here, so uh, I'm kind of going step by step to uh, line things up and just kind of show you uh, as I go. Uh, but you may not see me doing all the work. You'll notice I put a slight piece of uh, uh, aluminum foil there. That is not a requirement by any means. Uh, it was just originally when I was looking at it, I, I felt like I uh, might have oil that kind of leaks out and hits that uh, metal cross member uh, part of the uh, suspension and whatnot. So um, I didn't want to get oil all over the place and uh, so decided to just kind of put that there to, to try and uh, let it hit the aluminum foil that I can just pull off, but we'll find out in a second whether that's even really necessary. So now I already 
crack that open and give me a second here to adjust my uh, oil collection. And I did miss a little bit. So there you go. There's the bolt and it should have a uh, crush washer on there. And so we'll pull that off and replace it with a new one. Otherwise, at this point, just just letting everything drain. Almost had a nice big mess there because apparently I didn't pull this little cover off enough. So lessons learned. Sometimes we make mistakes. Okay, so now what I've done is I've already cracked this open and I'm just letting the excess oil drain out before I completely remove the uh, filter. Um, while we're doing that, I'll just let you know. I went ahead and pulled the original washer off of the drain plug and so then we'll add that crush washer uh, on from there so uh, as of right now everything seems to be looking pretty good uh, we'll take a closer look at the oil and the filter when this is all said and done gone ahead and removed the actual oil filter uh, from the oil housing that way i could kind of show it to you everything else is still sitting inside of the oil pan but we'll get to that in a minute uh, i've replaced this ring uh, so now all I have to do is connect the actual uh, new oil filter uh, and then I can reinstall it. Yeah, I pulled out the uh, oil filter just for a moment just so I can confirm that this model number does match that part number, excuse me. Um, and obviously this has got a wider hole to it, but that's because uh, once you push it in, uh, this actually helps provide the secure connection to the oil filter housing. Okay, so a few things here. Uh, number one, again, like I said, this is 35 Newton meters is what you want to tighten this to. Um, that works out to 25.81, I want to say, uh, feet pound of torque. Um, now, I always hand tighten this on as far as I can go uh, before the tension gets to a point where I need to then convert back over. Uh, I actually need to get a different torque wrench because this one is meant for much bigger jobs but uh, I had a little converter on it and my smaller one was uh, was actually too small and more meant for like smaller jobs so I need to get another one that would be better for this but nonetheless I got it tightened down uh, as well as I always finger tighten the drain plug uh, once you get that in there that you can tighten it down as well again do not over tighten uh, I can't tell you how many times um, I've seen uh, these drain plugs get so tightened down that you, you literally have to fight to get them off. You just need to get it tight enough so that it, it won't come loose and oil won't leak out as at the end of the day what you're trying to do. Same thing here and uh, the reason they give you that, that uh, torque wrench specification is because it's plastic housing. Uh, too much torque, you crack it and then now you're not just doing an oil change, but you're having to replace that, that entire housing. So let's go up top and start putting oil in. So at this point, what I've done, I always take a little rag and kind of put it right around the opening there uh, and set up my funnel. And so that way I can avoid trying to make some type of mess. Uh, make sure, obviously, you're putting in the right type of oil, 5W30. Uh, additionally, make sure that you're doing... Um, a properly certified oil which you will find on the back here and per the owner's manual ACE A5 uh, is what we're looking for or better and we've got that with this particular oil so uh, it's not just a matter of seeing that it says uh, 5W30 but also you're looking for these additional uh, service marks uh, that let us know that this is a quality oil worth putting into this car and that meets the owner's manual specifications. So another little tidbit for you uh, is that I'll go ahead and put in the full five quarts. Uh, this particular vehicle takes about 6.8 quarts 
And so I take this up to, with that five and one quart from here, we're at six. It won't take much more from this level to fill it up. Uh, and so what I like to do is actually let the oil settle, move the car back down to a flat surface, and then uh, from there, I'll check the oil to see where we're at and slowly top it off from there. Uh, because you'll never get all of the oil out of the engine. And so you don't want to overfill. Overfilling can cause its own set of problems. So you definitely want to make sure that you're within the proper range, never overfilled, never too low. So I got the car down to a level surface and we're, you check the engine oil right here. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But uh, uh, sure enough, we were just right on the low side of uh, the oil. So we're gonna go ahead and top it off at this point. All right, so I had to cut a gap there because I was having trouble getting the camera to view. But uh, as you can see, there's a couple of dots there. One says uh, next to full and one is low. And when you, if you haven't checked before, what you're looking for is you're checking to see that when you pull it in, clean it up, or excuse me, pull it out, clean it up, stick it back in to take a quick read. And when it comes up, you don't want this to be too high. In other words, you don't want it to be the, over the full area. And at the same time, you want it to be above the low. And I generally shoot for right in the middle, which as you can kind of see, hopefully, uh, that's about where I am. So that means I have added enough oil and I will check it again after uh, I've run it and let it sit. But at this point, we know that the oil change is done. For the record, in my case, uh, we did five quarts. And as you can see here, uh, that is right at around uh, just shy of six and a half quarts is what went in there. So even though the owner's manual says 6.8, um, 6.8 would have probably taken me uh, over full in this particular case, which means there's some of the original oil in the engine. But um, that just gives you an idea anyway of, of what I mean by you don't want to just automatically go by the spec off of the owner's manual. You want to actually take the time to uh, to put it in there little bit by little bit uh, to, to feel out where you need to be. All right, so I butchered the old filter. And the reason I did that is I, I just wanted to see if we could see where there were any metal shavings. And I don't know if you can see the sparkly stuff, uh, but those are the metal shavings from a new engine that's being broken in. It's not too bad, actually. Uh, in line with what you'd expect at no time. You know, there's a little bit extra right there. So, uh, in no time have I seen anything that scares me. No real big chunks. Uh, but there's definitely shavings, and this is why I like to do an early oil change once I feel comfortable, based on the owner's manual, that the engine is broken in and piston seated. Uh, I like to go ahead and just get the junk out. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Oil change done, and I'm going to go ahead and include just a small tidbit here right at the end in terms of why did I specifically go with Penn's Oil, um, even though I'm obviously not sponsored by them. This isn't about money or anything like that. Um, and the basics are, I, I know with these uh, gas-directed engines that the biggest thing that, that we would have to maybe worry about is uh, the carbon buildup. And where most of your base oils are, are some kind of crude oil or you know, when you get into a, a full synthetic, um, the base for this is actually um, natural gas. So in theory, natural gas should burn cleaner. And whenever you have oil, I don't know how many of you might be cooks, but uh, if you make a reduction, that's effectively what your car is doing to this oil uh, during that life of the service interval. So, um, you know, the oil heats up and as it heats up, some of it vaporizes. Uh, it actually gets recycled through the engine. Um, and when that gets recycled through the engine as a vapor, uh, it can cause carbon deposits. And so the reason I went with this one specifically was because of the 
the natural gas. I have no scientific evidence that tells me that that is going to ultimately be better than, let's say, a 5W30 uh, Castrol Edge that also meets the same uh, standards, you know, the ACEA A5. Um, I don't know that for sure. All I know is that uh, for me personally, uh, it was just something that I, I felt like I wanted to try, um, kind of test out whether or not this this does a better job than, let's say, uh, a similar spec oil uh, that, that doesn't have uh, natural gas as a base oil. So that is the reason why I'm trying it. Uh, I will tell you, if you do anything at all, I don't, you know, I don't care what brand you like or anything along those lines, but if you do anything at all, make sure that you're getting a good quality oil, especially in these GDI engines. And um, if you don't, I think you're just asking for trouble with carbon buildup and carbon deposits. It's going to happen no matter what. I'm almost certain of that. Uh, however, you're the quality of your oil is the only thing that helps really guard and protect uh, those carbon deposits from building up and becoming uh, a complication for your engine.